Now we'll talk about adding numbers with different signs. And that means we're adding two numbers and one of them is positive and one of them is negative. So let's look at a couple of simple examples. And these examples are trivial, but pay attention to the thought process that I explain when we do this. The first one is negative two plus five. What does that equal? Well, picture this as movement on the number line. We start at zero and we remember that addition can be pictured as movement on the number line. So we start with a negative two, that means we go two to the left, that puts us here at negative two, and then the plus five means we go five to the right, so that puts us right here. We end up at positive three. So three is the answer. Now pretty simple, but with that in mind, let's look at this next one. Two plus negative five. What does that equal? Well again, think of each of these as movements on the number line. The two means two to the right in this case, because it's a positive two, so that puts us there at two. And then the negative five takes us five to the left, five from here. So five to the left from there puts us at negative three. And so that's our answer. Notice that in one case we got three, the other case we got negative three. Now in both cases, we went five in one direction and two in the other direction. So in both cases, we ended up three units from where we started, because if we go five in one direction and then two in the other, five minus two is three. So we end up three units from where we started. And of course, when the five was positive, the bigger of the two numbers, the, the number out of those two that had the largest absolute value, when the five was positive, we ended up with our answer three to the right so a positive three for an answer. And when the five was negative, when we went farther to the left, we ended up at negative three. Negative three was our answer. These concepts that, that we see in these examples, um, th those apply whenever we add positive and negative numbers. So we can state this concept in general terms. So think of this as a procedure for adding numbers that have different signs. When you're adding two numbers with different signs, you can just think of the absolute value of each number and subtract the larger minus the smaller. And the number that has the largest absolute value determines whether the answer is positive or negative. And I'll go through this thought process some more in some examples here. Okay, first example, we're going to say 22 plus negative 100. What does that equal? 22 plus negative 100. And here's my thought process. I just think about the number 22 and the number 100. I'm ignoring this negative sign for a moment and just thinking about the absolute values of the numbers. And I'm going to find the difference in their absolute values. 100 minus 22, and I can do that in my head actually, that's 78. And the 100 is larger than 22, and in my original numbers here, the 100 was negative, so I end up further to the left then I go to the right. Think of this as moving 100 to the left and only 22 to the right, so I end up 78 units away from zero. So my answer is negative 78. Now if you want to picture that, and you don't have to draw this, but you should be picturing something like this in your mind. You're starting at zero, and the 22 plus negative 100 means you go 22 to the right and then negative 100 to the left. So if this length right here is 100, and that length right there is 22, then your answer, which is this length right here, from there to there, that length has to be 100 minus 22. And it's negative because we went further to the left than we did to the right. And you don't have to draw out a sketch like this every time, but I'm usually picturing something like that in my mind when I work through problems like this. Okay, the next example is 13 plus negative 8. Well again I'm going to ignore the negative signs and I just think okay what's the difference between 13 and 8? So 13 minus 8, well it's 5. And then I look at these numbers, the 13 and the 8, which of these numbers is bigger in an absolute sense? Well the 13 is bigger and in my original numbers the 13 is positive so my result is positive. So I don't stick a negative sign onto the answer. 5 is my answer. Okay. Another example, negative 39 plus 6. Well, again, we look at the absolute values of the numbers, 39 and 6, and we subtract the smaller 
from we do the, the we subtract the smaller from the larger so the larger minus the smaller 39 minus 6 is 33 and which of these is bigger 39 or 6 well clearly 39 is bigger and the 39 is negative so my result here has to be negative this is 33 to the left or 33 in the negative direction so my answer is negative 33 and the last example here negative 10 plus 17 so I think to myself okay which is bigger 17 or 10 17 is bigger so I do 17 minus 10 and that's easy it's 7 and so which is bigger 17 or 10 well 17 is bigger and that's positive in this case so my answer is a positive 7